again and welcome to the Caravan Channel. I'm Phil Widows and you're watching Britain's leading show all about campsites, caravanning, motorhomes and more. We've got another feature packed show for you today. Let's have a look at what's coming up. I'll be taking a look around the latest lightweight two berth caravan from Lunar, the Quasar. Andy climbs aboard a new Swift Contiki where he finds a storage area that no van should be without. And we take a trip into Essex to visit the quietly unassuming site at Kelverdon Hatch. But first, we sent Hadrian Garner to meet up with the Eldis Owners Club. Just what is an owners club and uh, what does it mean to be a member? Hello, I'm Hadrian Garner. Um, I'm here at the um, Caravan and Camping Club site at Blackmoor in, uh, in Malvern. Um, we're here actually uh, in an Eldis caravan. It's actually Moss Owens' caravan, who's the treasurer of the um, Eldis Owners Club. I'm with Paul McArdle, who's the vice chairman of the club, and Janice, his good wife, who is uh, probably a good woman behind a good man. What, um, what do you enjoy about being, uh, being part of this, uh, this club? I think it's the, the, the family atmosphere that this club creates. Everybody is one big family. Uh, we welcome new members all the time. Um, and it's the general atmosphere, being able to rally on greenfield sites. A rally is a, a gathering of eldest caravans uh, for a, a set period of time. It might be just for a weekend. It might be for 28 days um, where people get together and um, we charge a very small fee for, for the weekend for the use of the rally field. Okay. Mars, can I, can I talk about exemption certificate? When you hear about this, what is it? What does it mean to you as a club? The exemption certificate, one of the few uh, caravan clubs in the country that have actually got a 28 day exemption certificate. Basically it allows us to camp anywhere with your landowner's permission for uh, up to 28 days at a time. We run a lot of rallies, particularly in the summertime, on greenfield sites, which have literally got usually just a tap for water and somewhere to get rid of your waste. And you can find your own private, sort of your own little adventures, really, yeah, isn't it, when you think about exactly. it? I mean, I've brought three boys up uh, caravanning every weekend, and it can cost us sort of about £15 for the whole weekend, which is extremely important when you have children. We spoke about where you actually rally. Could you tell me some, just some places you've been and, and what you've done at those rallies and, and, uh, and what you really get up to? Well, some of the rallies that we have throughout the year, we have themes. For example, we have the Conquer Rally, we have the Pea Shooter Rally. Uh, the, the, the Conquer Rally? What, what's, yeah. what's that? It's specifically for Conquers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A great activity for children is Conquers. Yeah. Uh, and one thing you got up to at school was pea shooting, so we do a pea shooter rally. <laughs> uh, and we have themed rallies. We, ha we actually have... Uh, a Christmas children's rally as well, where we have a, a, a children's party for Christmas. This and we is have in the Santa heart Claus, of don't we? Santa Claus comes? Yes, we have Santa yeah. Claus there, yeah, that comes and presents uh, all the uh, parcels to the children. So in many respects, you, you almost have a sort of self-made mobile know. community of people yeah. that know yeah. each other. Yeah. Yes. And with children as well, you feel safe as a group to, to you know, to, to, to go and enjoy yeah. yourself yeah. On, a, on, on, a, on, a, yeah. on a long weekend or a weekend. And, you know, you can join in as much or as, as little as you want. You can use it as a base and, and go off from wherever you want to or you can join in the things that we we organize it's entirely up to you one thing i found very interesting about about your organization is the way that you self-fund a lot of the activities for the junior members in the club how do you how do you do that and what sort of activities do they get up to uh well we we charge uh, a small rally fee for uh, at each rally usually three to four pound per caravan and that money then goes to the children's fund and it's split, um, at the moment we split it, 25% uh, goes to the children, 75% goes to the chosen charity of the year. Uh, children go to adventure parks, uh, we have our AGM at Tosa this year and, and at that uh, the children are going to the snow zone. We have a weekend where they've got an opportunity to go up gliding. Uh, what about going abroad? Because you guys do venture abroad and I think for a lot of people who, who've taken up caravanning or feel that they want to try and go into Europe, what do you offer there? Uh, and we do do international rallies as well, Holland, France, um, during the holiday period which, which is specifically or particularly for fa to attract families. Okay. And we said earlier on about sometimes the rallies are, are a Thursday to a Monday or a Friday to a Monday. So I guess, again, people then working on a budget can have a little short break, if you like, and that can be cost-effective as well. 
Well, we publicise a rally book uh, which has all the events uh, and their specific dates throughout the year, which is sent out to members usually before the next year commences. So they can actually look in the rally book and plan the rallies that they can go on, depending on their work schedules or wherever it might be. The club this year is holding 55 rallies. Uh, and that's throughout the UK. That's a, that's a lot of rallies. Uh, yes, yeah. It is, yeah. <laughs> the rally marshals' uh, telephone numbers are, are publicised in there on the specific rallies, and you can phone the rally marshal and say, look, have you got a place for me tomorrow? 99.9% .9 of the time, yes, we have. Yes. Right, we're coming, that's great. Right, Thank that's you. fantastic. So yeah. if people's plans do change very quickly, they realise they can take a long weekend. And it very often happens. in the caravan, yeah. and off they go. Yeah. Chuck a few things in the caravan, yeah. and off you go. And that's, and that's and how it's it should simple be. As that. Yeah. 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 simple as that. Simple as that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm a motorhomer, and although I can see the attractions of caravanning, well, you take Phil, cut him in half, and he's got caravanner written all the way through him. So we sent him down to his local dealership to see one of the new models that turned up on the forecourt. You fancy blasting off into orbit? Well, let's have a look at the Lunar Quasar 462, which for a shade under £14,800 will put two people on the road in relative luxury, but it's also lightweight as well and can be towed behind most medium-sized family cars. And this is the baby of the range. So here we are inside the Lancashire-built Lunar Quasar 462. I mentioned it was a lightweight caravan. So this is a two berth, big washroom at the back, uh, galley and as well, of course. And you get all that with a, a maximum on the road weight of 1218 kilograms. That's 1,218 kilograms. It's not that much to say about the outside of the caravan. It's quite a conventional styling outside. Inside is where it's all happening. And um, first thing that hits your eye as you come in, at eye level are these locker doors with the uh, metallic details and these almost um, Rennie Macintosh style handles. Lots of light in this caravan, big overhead lights, Let's have a look under the bunks at the front here. This of course uh, is your main seating area and converts into a uh, quite a large double bed. Quite simple to get underneath. You can either pull down the flap at the front which reveals your electric switchboard there which is very handy. Easy to get out when you're setting up on site. You can turn on all your electrics and get it your fuse box quite easily. So you can either pull down that or lift up and that gets you this storage area underneath. But there's a little bit of a problem on this side in that you've got a lot of pipe work here which is a little bit untidy. I'd, I'd prefer to see some of that boxed off, maybe with a false floor, just to give you a bit more security. That styling I mentioned uh, is carried forth onto the chest here, which is a two-drawer chest with one of these uh, excellent slide-out tops. So you don't have to take everything off the top of the table before you can use it. One thing that did surprise me though was um, the front of the seats up here. Now obviously this chest sort of precludes you from sitting in there and so does the front rake of the, uh, the front window there. But um, this is a bit of dead space I think. You can't get into this area of storage uh, from here and it's not particularly that strong either. Well, but that's a little something that could have been done a little bit better I think. In the galley things are bright and airy and you've got a very wide worktop here with uh, a round metallic sink. What that broad worktop means is that uh, yes you've got a lot of room down here but when it comes to getting into this overhead locker which is fitted out with the plate rack and uh, other things for, for keeping uh, crockery up there it's a bit of a stretch especially if you've not got long arms or you're, you're a little shorty like me. Separate grill and an oven and again, an under oven storage area, which is quite handy. You need somewhere to put pots and pans, the heavy things like that that you don't want falling out of top cupboards. Over on this side of the galley area is what I suppose you'd describe as a sideboard. You've got your uh, space heater at the bottom of it, some cupboards and drawers, and then a serving area. It also has a TV and a, a socket and a, a mains power socket, so you can put your TV on there or maybe down at the front of the van. So you've got a bit of a choice there. Look at the door on this thing. It's a big, heavy, sliding wooden door and it's impossible, almost, to shut quietly. Imagine that at two o'clock in the morning, trying not to wake up your beloved on the bed just behind you. Inside, well, you've got a, a cozy shower cubicle, 
the, the loo offers the most comfortable seat in the house, I think, and you can wave cheerfully through the clear glass window to people going outside. Why do they put the clear glass in windows in bathrooms? I don't know. Practical sized sink there. The storage underneath could be better. But what's really good in here is an enormous wardrobe. So there we have the Lunar Quasar 462. Overall, a lot of things I like about this van. I like the lightness. Uh, money for petrol is something that we all worry about these days. And uh, towing this van will cost you less because it's lighter. That's a good thing. I like, when it comes to lightness, I like the lightness inside as well. It's a very light, bright and spacious van inside. A few niggles I'm not too keen on, such as those underbed storage areas and that very heavy uh, washroom door um, that uh, just doesn't seem to work for me. I could live with those, I suppose. Overall, for the money and for the weight, I think it's a nice little van and something that uh, I'd consider if I was looking to tow it with a smaller car than a 4x4, for instance. Worth checking out. Well, that's all we can squeeze in before the break, but join us again in a few minutes when Andy will be giving another motorhome a good going over and we visit a campsite in the heart of Essex. That's Kelverden Hatch. <laughs>